The Theater Curation Project was born in the spirit of stewardship over the art, craft, and history of the theater. Its purpose is to curate these stories of our mentors and what they passed on to us to be a resource for future generations. Its goal is to preserve these stories and the lessons within them from being lost forever. Hello, I'm Julian Richings. I'm an actor. I work in theatre, film and television. And I'm going to talk about my mentor, whose name is Martin, but I'm not going to give his last name for reasons that I think I can explain. Um, so my story goes back to when I was at high school, uh, which I guess would have been around 1969, somewhere around there, in England. A state school, um, all boys, uniforms, no arts programs to speak of except the annual school play. We happened to have a very progressive young English teacher that was putting on a very unusual play that year. It was We Bombed in New Haven by Joseph Heller, which was an anti-war play, very much in the vein of his famous novel Catch-22. And I remember being really excited about this and the fact that it was so unusual, it had strange themes, it was um, very, uh, it had very bad language, which was kind of exciting too. And the idea of being able to flaunt the bad language on stage in a high school was amazing. And um, I remember waiting outside a staff room on the day that the announcement was made as to who was going to be cast in the play. And I was anxiously standing there waiting to see when the, the sign would go up and if my name had been included. And as I stood there across the corridor, was uh, a well-known figure in our school, Martin. And Martin was a guy who was picked on by everybody. He was older than I was. He was physically distinctive, tall, thin. His clothes were always a little bit different. Um, no reason, but everybody just piled on him in all kinds of ways, verbally, physically, did wretched things to him. And I was appalled by it, but I never did anything. And that was the same that day too. As I stood there, a couple of other kids were taking things out of his bag and throwing them on the floor and then throwing other things at him. And they were then just flicking him and doing awful, awful things. And I got that part in the play. I did the play, which was a big success. And it made a lot of people think deeply. And it made me think about Martin and how <laughs> with my success in that play, I could still be a failure. And I still failed to do the very thing at hand, which was to help the guy that needed it right next to me. And that voice of Martin or, or that nagging conscience has always been in my mind ever since and in every job that I've taken. Now, every job that I've taken has never been to change the world. It's often been for financial reasons or it's been to further my career. It's been for egotistical reasons, but there has always been a voice in my head. There's been Martin's voice or the voice saying, what about Martin? And what are you going to do? And are you going to stand up for him? Are you going to be the person that, at least if you don't fight for him, uh, you don't fight the bullies, are you going to represent him properly? Or are, are you going to create a society that's at least better and more tolerant? And uh, I have Martin to thank for that. Uh, I failed, but I do think that a very important part of being a mentor is to point out people's failures. And I certainly have that. And uh, I also have Martin to thank. And I also still worry about him. Please subscribe to our Theatre Curation Project YouTube channel to see previous installments and hit the notification bell to be alerted when a new story has been posted.